back again. Okay, so we will we will see where the muse takes us this time. This is uh going to be about breath work. Um about this person's experiences with, with breath work with a, a certain modality that I have yet to uh, research but I'm probably going to get into for various reasons but uh, yeah I'm probably going to give uh, several shout outs to in, in future videos <laughs> not right now uh, to, to several people uh, who have been inspiring me and touching my heart um, and not just my heart by my heart I mean like all of our hearts uh, even if uh, you you create videos and you think that you're just uh, you know getting shit out or uh, getting shit off your chest uh, it's it's still reaching people like that are having similar experiences or are feeling similar things so uh and oftentimes and i feel like most of the time uh and i mean i go through this too and i'm like well, why am i doing this but uh but then the feedback that i get you know like it kind of reminds us of uh we're not the only ones feeling these things. Not by a long shot. So, uh... I'm just gonna say the name... Uh... Oh, nope. <laughs> it's not there. It's not there right now. Uh... Very much native person. Uh, speaking of the core, the, the roots, where it all starts, where the corruption starts. Uh, oh my gosh. Anyone who's brave enough to speak out, um, even though they're going to feel the backlash of, of the uh, mentality of the system and the control structure and how that's going to be experienced and I'm not telling you what your experience is going to be but at the same time um, I'm telling you from a place where like I've experienced it I have experienced enough people experiencing it that I, I can say once you uh, align yourself with truth, like, fully, these energies are going to, uh, these energies that want to maintain a control structure are going to uh, seep into and act upon people that are close to you, and not even necessarily, like, super close to you, as in family structure, but yes, like, that's going to be, like, the main uh, hurdle for you is having your family structure. And it's obviously going to be dependent upon how close you are with your family. But, uh, that's the first hurdle is the, to try to get to you in uh, your deep <coughs> connections. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, where the pain and the trauma can be utilized the most. And then, if you, if you overcome that, it's, it's going to be uh, through, through er anything, anyone and everyone that you encounter. Uh, and if you're like anything like me, it's going to be every single fucking experience that you have whenever you are around people, whenever you just, the happenstances around people. These energies are going to flare up within them. And oftentimes they won't engage you directly because once they do that, 
uh, and you have a moment with them, and then that energy disperses. Realize how strong you are, and that's not easily done by any means. Oftentimes, the uh, we can call it egoic mind, but it's really a false sense of self uh, can get caught up. In thinking uh, that we are uh, big, as in that we can handle more than, than what we actually can. And, and yes, we, we can handle it all, but we have to remember all the aspects of ourselves in order to do this. We have to reintegrate, harmonize, realize the perfection that you are. This is very much easier said than done, but engage, go into the direct experience, gnosis, feel it for yourself. You don't need to go outside of you. To find the answers, the only answer that you need, quote unquote, need to feel. Is you. You are the fucking answer. But what are you truly? That a pathway of finding yourself, of going within, that's going to lead you to the answer that you are. We all are. Once we realize it. Okay. <laughs> Enough of that. Uh, let's go into this, which is breath work. Uh, right before we start it, I'm going to say, um, I, I've been, uh, I've had this uh, response with uh, why people will shy away from this. Um, and uh, one of the responses is, and I'm not going to name any names here, but if you're listening to this, you know who you are. Uh, uh, it takes me in a dark places. That's, that's the whole fucking point, dude. This this deep breath work takes you back to your core. It makes you engage your traumas, the shit that's going on that you need to deal with. That's the whole fucking point. So if someone suggests to you that you engage deep breath work and you come up with an excuse, and we all do this, you know, from time to time we come up with reasonings and excuses or whatever why we can't do something but i mean deep down we 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 really know like this is we're just playing ourselves in the end but especially with the breathing if you are if you have fear attached with that then that's because you you truly, truly need it. And you're blocking yourself from truly healing. And that's and that's on many levels, not just with the breath. People do that on on a lot of fucking levels with a lot of different shit that they're presented with uh, on their day to day lives. They come up with these uh these little reasonings and excuses to uh, shy away from the truth. A lot of it's to do with indoctrination. A lot of it's to, a lot of it's to do with the that they've become comfortably numb in their stagnation. Oh. 
How is it possible that we're able to access these psychedelic-like states through just breathing alone? <sighs> what is going on here? The fuck? So yeah, th this this lovely lady, uh, very beautiful lady, uh, within and without. Uh, she, she, she's, she's coming along <laughs> with her inner shit. Um, she did an absolutely amazing piece, uh, with Wim Hof, where her and, I can't remember, she'll say in this, uh, the group that she did it with, um, that was one of the most powerful, uh, things, because, uh, we got to witness, uh, several people go through, uh, different, uh, thresholds for the, for themselves. In that, uh, video. That was very powerful. And, uh, it was kind of, I think, from my memory, it was kind of an experiment for Wim Hof. Like, he knew the people he was bringing in, and he wanted to try something kind of like a, kind of a little bit more cutting edge, kind of a little bit more like, okay, let's engage the power of your mind. Let's engage the power of your will. And, uh, it fucking worked. Like, not only just did he convince them, but, but he... He was, uh, basically he reminded them of the power that they have inside themselves. And this is, this is the beauty of this intensive breath work. It reminds us of the connection that we all have with each other. It reminds us of our core, our essential essence. And it brings us in that direct communion with it. So whatever you're going through in life, if you're going through hard times or whatever, even if you're not, engage this deep breath work. Research Wim Hof. Do it. Be on the research. Yes, do the research, but then become the research. Take it upon yourself to engage the research. Re-search, of course, but search within, in-search. Engage, remind your body and your mind of the felt connection experience of engaging on a deep, deep level. And this shit is going to bring you um, to places where you're going to break down. You're going to have crazy experiences. And it's because you need it. You need to allow these things to happen. My first breathwork experience happened during my 200-hour yoga teacher training during my senior year of college. This experience was very... Okay, so yes, as in the, uh, the genie style, I'm probably going to be stopping this many times. Uh, just to interject and, you know, say <clears throat> my experiences, so... Uh, Whenever she mentioned her uh, yoga teacher training, it reminds me of mine, so uh, which was a 200 hour as well. And that breath work that I went through, uh, I'm just going to say that any kind of teaching that I've been through has been uh, a learning process in that uh, it, it's been uh, difficult for me not to take the people either teaching or the people involved all the way. It's been a process for me to allow, to see where people are at currently, to allow them to go through their own process and not 
interject too much, to not give too much information and gnosis. So uh, with the breath work, yes, I, I was kind of uh, introduced to a, a couple different breathing uh, techniques, but as far as intensity, uh, no, because I was already I was already into Wim Hof and shit. So if you engage Wim Hof type styles of breath work, and this obviously goes back into pranayama and uh, tumo. Uh, if you've already done this, and then, you know, people want to come and talk about certain levels of breath work, you, you kind of just have to entertain it. And then, um, I, I, I've attempted, you know, to, to get people, uh, involved in this. I, I, I gave these people the information of Wim Hof, and, and as far as I know, like, none of them, uh, took it upon themselves to research any of it even if they found it interesting what I said uh, I never heard anything back from from them uh, researching and if they really did they, they definitely would have uh, let me know that they found something deep inside within themselves but uh this has been just uh, another process as well uh, in experiencing truth and engaging it from oneself and trying to spread that this kind of information to other people, which is this kind of information is uh, go inside yourself, do your own inner work, but like even when you give specifics or people who have really done it and guide people into doing it e even that uh you'll quickly realize that um, most everyone is not ready to shed their layers to go in deep to feel and realize truth within themselves and an ultimate truth which is just an engagement with it direct experience with it so this has been my case with uh, trying to share Wim Hof this has been my case with trying to share uh, the ringing cedars of Russia and the Anastasia uh, YouTube has been the only place where some people have have actually responded and engaged with my sharing of this information whereas uh, in my past save one person engaged it a little bit before they went back into their own uh, comfort zone and boxed in mind state everyone that I've shared this with has come up with an excuse why they will not continue to read it and it's not a reading thing so like, if, if someone wants to say you know oh books it's, it's not a book thing it's a uh, remembrance thing And uh, whenever I put my first video up about uh, that, that subject, you know, of course, and I, and I knew what I was getting into, uh, I, ha I had just projection thrown at me, and, and that's fine. You know, books have binders. Like, well, you're, you're missing the whole fucking point. And then immediately after I, I went through... Uh, that day that I, um, I made the previous video of of just having shit thrown at me and that's fine I knew I knew that was coming and, and I obviously I know what the fuck I'm getting myself into like I I know what age I'm in like right now 
that we're moving out of a certain age into clarity. So, uh, if you speak upon clarity, you you're going to have to get used to having uh, people's insecurities and people's bullshit thrown back at you, or you're just going to fall back into your own. Uh, I don't know, modes, modalities, uh, places of being where you don't have to deal with that shit. But if you're really dedicated, then uh, you learn how to deal with that shit, learn how to navigate it. So I also wanted to say that uh, when I shared the video about the ringing cedars and, and the homesteads and the people living like that, uh, I immediately noticed other people starting to share as well. And there's no coincidences here. And I've been holding back, like I said in that video, I've been holding this shit back for a while because uh, I've been feeling the process out when it's time to admit. And that time is now. It's always now because there is only always now. But there is a time, quote unquote, whenever it's more beneficial, more... You could say aligned. That sounds too new agey. Whenever enough people and energies engage in a certain way, and whenever things are be are able to be felt in a certain way, in a more deep and holistic way, that's when it is quote unquote time to emit. So, uh, okay, I'm going to go a little bit down deep, and then I'm going to go back to this video. Uh, we're going to see a peak in chaos and uh, corruption in the world. And uh, a lot of people won't see it, but, I mean, we all feel it. And if you don't, if you don't, understand what's going on um i'm finally having people come to me and, and tell me their personal experiences with uh uh the words what to use uh the death cycle so uh the corruption That is being amped up, and people are experiencing uh, this this uh, ideology of aging at a very very high pace right now, as in uh, in this cycle, uh, faster than than um, any time before with with this current cycle, and I'm experiencing this as well. And so, uh, for a while, I just thought I was the only one experiencing it, you know. So, I don't really go out of my way to talk about this kind of stuff. For the most part. And then I had people come to me, and uh, the few people close to me in my life come to me and tell me. So, uh, I'm like, what a coincidence. I'm going through this as well. So, uh. I imagine quite a few of us are going through a intense uh, energetic emotional response to what is actually occurring to our physical bodies because of certain outside influences and forces. And this isn't to put uh, a spotlight on these things. This is uh, to remind you that 
you are not alone and to remind you that You can overcome anything and everything by going within, feeling the truth again, feeling where you need to be guided to, and going there, flowing there. The pathways will open up before your eyes once you just release into it. Easier said than done, of course, but... This is something you will experience for yourself once you release into it. Eye-opening to me, and it was very powerful and potent. I couldn't believe what I was feeling in my body and what I was working through emotionally by just breathing alone. So from the exactly. get-go, breathwork was something that really fascinated me because of this powerful experience I had. So when I moved to L.A. about three years ago... I started diving into all different types of breath work. If you've seen my videos about the Wim Hof Method, the Yes Theory documentary, or... Okay, yes. That... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That is it. Yes Theory. Uh, those people go in into the Wim Hof. And this guy right here, uh, he... Uh, he has a reaction that... And that is Wim Hof above him. He's uh, trying to stimulate the vagus nerve and uh also just uh holding him just just whenever you hold a person and let them know that they're very uh secured and they have someone there looking after them that in and of itself oftentimes will allow someone to release into the experience this is shamanics this is uh one huge aspect in being a shaman with people engaging uh, deep experiencing for themselves, deep experiences for themselves, uh, and, then, and then potentially freaking out, potentially having uh, a moment where they they uh, have a reaction. And so, as a shaman, we need to uh, remind them that they are in a safe space and that they can release however they need to that it is okay whatever they need to do this guy specifically was doing the Wim Hof breathing laying down which if you're laying down you're going to be more prone to having uh, certain types of reactions say maybe uncontrollable laughter or uh, intense crying or blacking out and uh, what this reminded me of every time I see this is uh, very much like a baby. He, he very much went back into infancy. And what happens with his breath work is it brings us back to our core. So uh, it, it, it takes the blood flow. It takes the energy. Because once we engage with this deep breath work, our mind goes out of the loops that it's used to engaging within certain parts of the brain, certain parts of the mind, and it goes back into the core. And so, if we're not used to experiencing deep levels of core feelings, then we may have certain reactions to that. You will have. And yes, like this might be embarrassing, say, for uh, people to put on display or whatever. So kudos to this guy for allowing people to see him in, in, him in this state, which is just going through the process. That's, that's all that's happening. He's going through the process of feeling back into his core. A feeling in the places that he forgot was there. This also goes into shamanics, goes into uh, dream work. Deep level healing, 
you're going to experience deep level meditation even you're going to eventually go back into the breath that's where it all begins and, and ends and then begin again and then, and then you're going to release your control of the breath and then you're going to experience death and birth at once it's all tied into the breath Breathe in the video I made for Yoga Journal about holotropic breath work. You may already have an idea about what breath work is and how it works. But if you're totally new to this subject, don't worry, we're going to break it all down in this video. While pranayama, or breathing practices, have been around for thousands of years amongst the yogis and monks, its popularity in Western culture really started around the 1970s when Dr. Stanislav Grof developed something called holotropic breathwork as a way to induce a psychedelic state for psychotherapeutic benefits without the use of drugs. We have seen people um, getting over different forms of uh, phobias, a variety of other problems, improving self-image. As I Yeah, and, and there's been many forms of this as well. Um, uh, from the forms that I have witnessed, it, it's more... Uh, it's it's uh, drawing away from the inner experience and then kind of putting a, a focal point on the exertion, the output, the release, which is not what needs to be done here. Uh, the healing begins inside and the release is just kind of the after effect. It's what happens. Don't put your focus on that. That's, that's going to get you caught up in the bullshit. This is um, a big part of why things are the way they are, is because we're caught up in the aver effects, the bullshit, the scripts that we have been indoctrinated into believing. And then we are led away from the actual feeling. So this intensive breath work brings you directly back into the feeling. It gets you out of your fucking head, as in out of your uh, certain ways of thinking and certain ways of engaging and you just totally get back into a, the experience of breathing, of being, of going deeper and deeper, testing your limits, finding your way back to the core. Be good to make more videos about breath work and other holistic healing modalities, I often see that people comment that they wish they lived somewhere in the world where they had access to this. So when I recently just Okay, and just that, I can already tell I'm not gonna get through all this. I wanted to share all this video because it's, it's magnificent. But uh, just, they wish they lived somewhere in the world where they had access to this. Okay, maybe she was hinting at like a community, which is kind of why she made this video, uh, spotlighting this. But uh, this kind of deep breath work, like it, it reconnects you with uh, all of humanity, with with your deep connection is in your roots. So like, there's no. I wish this was in my community because, <laughs> motherfucker, it, you have it within you at all times. This is talking about like consciousness, essentially. Like, you have it at all times. You have that connection at all times. The question is, can you quiet the mind? Can you quiet the fucking monkey mind so that you can feel this and engage it? And then, things will open up. You'll find the people and the groups or whatever you need to find. Discovered a global online breathwork community. I knew that I needed to try this out to see if online breathwork is something that might be a way for people all around the world to access this modality that has had such a profound mm. impact on my own life and spiritual path and is doing the same for many other people around the world. In order to learn more about this online breathwork community, I went to meet the man who created it. Hey, 
this guy in Brooklyn? Thank you for having me. Wow, it's like a jungle in here. <laughs> Show me around. Sure, come on up. I uh, designed the house and had it built about uh, 20 years ago. And because there's not a, a lot of land outside, I decided to bring nature indoors. So wow. this is the result. Michael Stone is a certified breathwork facilitator who's been guiding breathwork experiences for more than a decade in person and online. Originally, I had no interest in, in things like breathwork based on my science background because mm. it just felt kind of very new agey. <laughs> then about 16, 17 years ago, I ended up uh, going to Peru and I did a medicine journey. And what do you know? One of the most amazing experiences of my life. It was the, really the... <clears throat> so this guy gives me interesting vibes, like uh, seeing him, uh, what's the dude that immediately comes to mind? It is Tom Hanks' son. That's the guy <laughs> that this guy reminds me of. But uh, what he just said there kind of uh, really inspired me to, to go ahead and make this video. Uh, not just because of the breath work, but also to share um, one of my most profound experiences in, in this life. As in this embodiment. And that is when uh, I have not done ayahuasca. I have done uh, DMT and, and many, many other uh, chemicals, substances, plants, plant spirits. Uh, I've done nothing and experienced all spirits. So, I mean, the essence of meditation, the essence of experiencing, uh, taking in of certain things is to be reminded of what's always within us. So, uh, I am a huge Terrence McKenna fan. Uh, one of the things that he and he he got a little bit too uh, deep into mushrooms. If you, if you know a little bit about <laughs> the tumor that was in his mind, that was in his brain, it was blocking his mind. Uh, I took this her his uh, heroic dose that he describes. And it was a uh, closed cap mushrooms, and I, I was I was told at the time that they were going to be more potent. I, I really didn't know at the time, but uh, that was one of the most profound experiences of my life. After consuming all these, uh, the onset, as was as I was uh, being released into the experience. Um, I I witnessed my all my memories, my memories of waking life, as well as all my memories of my of all the dreams I've ever had. They all were suddenly accessible and felt. And then what happened is uh, I felt the image of a certain individual that I had a uh, deep connection with. Maybe I didn't really <sighs> understand as much as I could have. But with this person, we could have created uh, a lot of harmony together. Um, and maybe we will uh, now, actually. That, that time passed. Uh, but at the same time, like, it, it, it's just a reminder, like, uh, well, first of all, uh, that person's face and image, uh, was, was kind of, uh, brought into my mind's eye, like, uh, very profoundly, very profoundly, to the point where I was kind of asking other friends if they knew how to contact this person, because I felt like I needed to do that afterwards. But, uh, more than anything, it just was a reminder of a fell connection with, uh, the feminine. With the, uh, with the deep love and honoring that.
So after that uh, initial onset, and, and any of you have who have done deep um, meditations or encounters with different entheogens or things like this, um, you will, you will know that the onset is is. It's its own kind of a quote unquote trip. It's like uh, it kind of uh, helps you, eases you into what you're about to experience. So, whenever I was fully into the experience, um, it was it was uh, more intensity than than I was uh, ready for. But that's that's fine because once we are faced. With, with certain things, we, we kind of come to realize where we are at, what we can handle, uh, what our reactions are going to be with something of this nature. So what my reaction was is I did intensive breath work because that's the only thing that I had control over at this point in time is my breath work. Uh, so I, I did uh, intense fucking breathing for our time at this point it just dissolves um, into the old time into the no time so I don't know how long I did this kind of breath work but I do know that I did it so so much and I was in the lotus posture that my whole body became purple um, I had vasoconstriction within my all my extremities my legs were completely coiled up and bound to my body to my to my core my arms were were c curled up kind of like they reminded me like chicken wings uh completely curled up and all i could do was breathe so with that intensive breath work this was kind of like a forcing uh, it forced me to engage this but it was also a willing act do I engage this or do I just release and uh, meld and I had that option as well and I did not choose that because of the, my environment I was in I was not in the correct environment for this experience which was to be out in nature and I eventually after I um, regained more cognizant and mobile uh, functions I, I did try to go out uh, about 15 to 20 minutes away into a place out in nature. But by that time, uh, the, those deep experiences had already passed, so I was just kind of left there uh, in the afterglow, you could say. But also, one thing that happened this was my first really intense experience with, with this kind of breath work. This kind of opened me up to this kind of breath work. Um, because I, I, I was breathing like a fucking uh, Olympic athlete like in, in a crazy competition for I don't know how long. Um, on the drive out to where I was going, I, I didn't breathe at all. Because my body was so oxygenated that I didn't need to breathe. And I didn't realize it until some time afterward that I wasn't breathing anymore. Because I already was full of breath, full of ka, full of life, full of spirit. And you will experience, you will experience this for yourselves once you engage in this kind of deep breath work. You don't need to have necessarily have uh, any kind of little helper or entheogen or plant spirit medicine although those can be great aids and I, I recommend those in the right manners in the right engagements do so knowing that you're going to you are going to engage deep feelings Deep engagements, deep gnosis, and that—that that is what you know. Time, quote unquote, time it is, it is to engage this, to be reminded 
to remember all the little pieces and aspects of ourselves that we have lost and forgotten along the way to recollect them hmm. so y'all yeah, this is huh, this is already pretty long uh I wanted to share more of this video, uh, Sky Life, if I haven't already said that, <laughs> is the YouTube uh, channel. Yeah, she does, she does some pretty cool stuff. <clears throat> so yeah, it's just a reminder, um, this is just a reminder to engage your breath, engage your core, to engage the places that you are afraid to go, because those are the places that you really need to go. So if if someone suggests to you that you engage your breath deeply, that you engage a certain type of practice, say Shivambu or in taking your own waters and you have this feeling come up of repulsion or this feeling come up of fear which is what happens with with breath people are feel fearful of it because they instinctually the body knows that you're going to be forced and faced with your demons, you're going to be faced with things that you have been ignoring for so long and it's not going to be an easy process. The longer you ignore it, the more it takes to d dissolve the barriers. <coughs> oh. And I sneezed because I only get these sneezes nowadays whenever uh, I live in a college town so whenever these college kids come back that's the only time I ever get the sniffles and sneezes any other time I, I, I'm i fine because I, I cleanse I intake of the honey but whenever new uh, microbiomes are introduced to the environment then my body has to readjust. So yes, allow yourself to readjust. Allow yourself to engage the things that you find you are drawn towards, that maybe you happen upon. Oh hey, this is interesting. Hmm. Or if you see other people experiencing certain things. Oh, hey, this is interesting. Don't stop there. Engage it for yourself. Engage that shit. Because that is the healing you need. You are presented with this because you need to engage it. Feel it and heal it. Get out of your own way. And just feel this shit. Engage it. Feel back into your core. Feel back into the original essence. Allow the release to happen. It doesn't need to be a big deal. And if it is at the time, fine, it is. Release it. Re-engage. Keep going back to your core, to your truth, as in the truth, as in the quintessential nature of beingness, of isness. You can engage this in every single moment if you just stop, breathe, get back in tune with your breath. Feel it. 
feel the real. Discern from the fucking bullshit that is just constantly thrown at you. Listen to those truth vibrations that are emanating from the heart. The heart of hearts. All of our hearts as one. Reattune to that vibration. Reattune your heartbeats. You can do this just by feeling back into your heartbeat, slowing it down, finding the rhythm and cadence, going out in nature, allowing your heartbeat to go into the nature all around you, feeling the response that, that life around you has with your heartbeat, with your awareness of your heartbeat, of your breath. All of nature will respond in kind. This is what happens. No matter what kind of environment you find yourself in, the universe will respond in kind to the work you have done inside. So keep on working within. Keep on doing the work, work ins to work out the bullshit. Peace.